for the past few months, large deposits of seaweed known as sargassum have been washing up on several beaches across the island. Although this is an annual occurrence, this year's deposits were deemed unusual, since in some instances, there were as high as three feet. This has caused problems for all who use our beaches. This particular brown alga is called sargassum, and there are two types that are affecting the coast of Barbados at this time. There's the sargassum natans and the sargassum fluitans. And it's a floating alga that um, has air bubbles associated with it, and the air bubbles keep it floating. So it's a floating seaweed. Um, its source is supposed to be the Sargasso Sea, um, an area of the, uh, the Central Atlantic Ocean, Western Central Atlantic Ocean, just off the coast of Florida. And the Sargasso Sea is surrounded by currents that are cyclical. And those currents um, cause a dead zone in the middle. And that's what we call the Sargasso Sea. This sargasm seaweed is generated in the Sargasso Sea and because of the dead zone in the center usually it doesn't get out of this area of the Sargasso Sea. Bits and pieces of it will become entrained in the currents around the sea and then come down towards the islands. So for example um, the East Coast beaches of Barbados would always have a little bit on the coast and in the summer you get a little bit more than usual. However, um, what is different this year is the quantity. There's huge algal mats of this orgasm uh, moving not just towards Barbados, but Florida and the islands from Florida all the way down to the um, northern coast of Venezuela. Presently, there is no conclusive evidence as the reason for the influx of seaweed. Many have described it as a simple act of nature, while others say it's because of man's continuous destruction to the environment. We don't know at the, at the moment what the cause is, uh, why that is occurring. We know that um, the northern Gulf of Mexico, there's also been some generation there. And the, Gulf, the U.S. Gulf Coast states are also reporting very heavy deposits of this orgasm. Um, some people have speculated that it may be due to the BP oil spill even though we don't have any evidence of that. There's also some speculation that it may be climate related. The issues associated with climate change may be breaking down the, the current patterns around the Sargasso Sea, causing the seaweed to come out of the sea and down to the islands. That's of course a possibility. However, um, in terms of the observations so far, uh, those who have been observing the current patterns, we haven't seen uh, that breakdown. Um, we now have uh, an emerging idea that there may be a completely different source of this seaweed that may be south of us. Um, when we first talked about it in the Coastal Zone Management Unit, we, we decided that there needed to be perhaps some very large pulse of nutrients that would um, discharge into the Atlantic Ocean that would cause this amount of seaweed to grow. And that is also a possibility. As you know, there's some very large rivers that discharge into the Atlantic. And that may be the reason. But at this point, um, scientists are still working on it. And we are watching the satellite images. And hopefully, we'll have some idea as to the cause. Now, what is linked to knowing the cause is knowing whether this is now going to be an annual event from now on that we're going to have to deal with for the rest of our lives or if this is a one-off event. Large amounts of seaweed are still said to be moving towards the island, so it is still not yet known when the phenomenon will end. We have been monitoring what is out there. The algal slicks, as we call them, um, some of them are as large, uh, as wide as half a mile and, so, and, and maybe two to three miles long. So they're really large mats of algae still moving towards Barbados. And so with that in mind, I would say that we have at least another few weeks of this, perhaps until the end of September, perhaps going into October. Uh, we're not really sure at this stage, but we do expect that a large component of our work is going to be monitoring what is offshore. And, and, and we would be then able to tell you when the event is, is tapering off. Um, so we're working with the regional security system, uh, the pilots who would be doing their patrols. We're asking, com um, uh, they are in contact with commercial pilots as well as the Coast Guard when they go on their uh, marine patrols 
we're asking them to look out for these large algal mats and let us know so that we would be able to monitor the amount that is coming to Barbados. For those who may have been wondering, the seaweed is not known to be harmful to humans as it is used as a dietary supplement in many countries around the world. However, local health professionals believe that Barbadians should avoid eating the sargassum seaweed. No, we don't have any um, issues with the seaweed as such. Uh, it comes into the, you can touch it, you can look at it, you can run your foot through it, that sort of stuff. Um, we haven't found any particular health effects from the seaweed. Uh, some of the concerns we may have with the seaweed is persons determining that they should eat the seaweed or so on. Um, it isn't that the seaweed is not, it, it is not good as a dietary supplement. Some people use it in making of tea. Um, I think the Chinese presently package it, dry it, and package it in small five gram sachets and making tea. However, they, we don't recommend that people in Barbados use the, the sargassum seaweed because we've been finding that the seaweed comes in and it has lots of debris and refuge entangled within it. Persons have been concerned in some areas about the strong smell of the seaweed. I think in normal areas you will find that the seaweed just has a normal seaweedy fishy odor. Um, some persons may complain that they may have a strong odor going along with it. The seaweed, uh, sargassum seaweed, is used as a nursery for lots of small for fish and other, other um, surface dwelling animals and plants. So when, they, when the seaweed is washed in, a lot of that comes in with the seaweed. And what people may have been smelling is the, the natural decay of other fish and, and um, as I said, surface dwelling um, organisms. So that's what they probably were smelling. But on a normal, with normal quantities of seaweed, with the normal seaweed as it is without those, those um, organisms, it just smells like seaweed. Seaweed plays a major role in the ecosystem, sometimes impacting it in a positive light, while at other times it can cause significant damage. The seaweed is an integral part of the ecosystem. And there are some po positive effects on the ecosystem, but when you get unusual events like this, you are going to get some negative impacts as well. Effects on fish, fishermen, I'm told, are actually utilizing the large algal mats offshore to find fish because the fish feed on the seaweed. Um, dolphin, wahoo, tuna, billfish, mostly. Um, the large pelagic fish would be associated with the, with the algae. Um, now, in terms of corals, algae have always been kind of a challenge for coral reefs because coral reefs must have access to sunlight. And when you get these large algal mats that come between the corals and the sunlight, you're going to have problems. So from that perspective, um, it could become a challenge for the corals. Also, as it settles out, it could settle out on the reef and actually smother it. So there are some challenges there. Um, with respect to the turtles, um, the turtles also, the, 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 the adult turtles feed on it. However, um, on beaches where you have nests, the, the hatchlings that are trying to get through, if it is a beach where you have a deposition of, of seaweed that's a foot high, the, the tiny hatchlings may have problems getting through the seaweed to get out to sea and they may die in the seaweed. So, so it, it, it's a delicate balance, these, eco, these coastal ecosystems. While many Barbadians may see the sargassum seaweed as a pest, persons in the agricultural sector are exploring its potential benefits. The sargassum seaweed is a very fascinating type of seaweed and definitely there has been some research um, on this, initially not directly by, by the Ministry of Agriculture because from the 1960s, um, research has found that Sargasm seaweed and other types of seaweeds can be used as a biostimulant that is to promote and enhance growth in plants. In addition, there are several other uses. It can be used as an organic fertilizer, it can also be used as an organic mulch, and in some cases, persons even use it as animal feed in some parts of the world. So there are several uses and applications in agriculture. In the context of Barbados, it would be mainly recommended to use it as a fertilizer or as an organic mulch. Um, but therefore we need to understand the, the properties of the same seaweed. Anyone who plans to use the seaweed as a fertilizer should take certain precautions before applying it to the soil. 
If the seaweed is applied without the correct treatment, it can affect the acidity of the soil, which in turn could affect the plants negatively. If you have it and you collected it from the beach, you can spread it in an area about an inch thick or two inches thick. But for each inch, you need to have at least an hour of rainfall continuously on that. So if you can get an hour of rainfall on that inch that you spread out over a particular area, that rainfall will leach the sodium from it. And then after that, all you need to do is either, if you can get it chopped in smaller um, particles, even better because it's going to release the nutrients faster. If you can't get that done, then you can allow it to compost for a period of time. When you compost it, then the nutrients are going to be more readily available to plants. As the seaweed continues to wash in daily on our beaches, one may wonder if it will have an impact on the tourism industry. The Barbados government is supportive of a national response and is leading that national response through the Ministry of Environment and Drainage to make sure that there is not an impact on tourism or in, indeed on Barbados, Barbadians' recreational space. Because it's not just tourism. Tourism, of course, is the economic aspect. But there's a social aspect as well to this that we would want to make sure um, remains unaffected. And so, um, the, the tourist beaches tend to be on the south and west coast. The beaches that are most severely impacted by sargassum are the north, east and southeast coast. Now, that doesn't mean that tourism would not be affected, but we know about some of the problems, for example, at the crane. And we're going to be assisting the crane in, in dealing with some of those issues because their beach is one of the beaches that had very, very heavy deposition for, for a continuous period of time. Um, but we want to make sure that the national response addresses the issue before it becomes a problem, both for tourism as well as for Barbados's recreational beach users. Browns Beach, for example, is a very popular beach with Barbadians. They, they leave work and they go to Browns Beach and they play beach ball and they run and they walk and they swim and they do all kinds of things. That is a, a good and excellent recreational space for Barbadians. The seaweed has started to come in there. But of course, on that side of the island, you're not getting this large deposition. So the NCC uh, um, officers who are working on that beach, they have been controlling the seaweed as it comes in. They just continually clean it and maintain the beach. And I think that that's the same thing that will happen on the south and west coast. Not that you will not get the seaweed on those tourist beaches, but that they will, it will come in in small enough quantities that are manageable for the stakeholders and NCC to handle. The NCC invites individuals and groups to join in the relocation process of sargassum seaweed as they are unable to use machines in the process. Persons who decide to participate in cleanups are asked not to disturb the seaweed which is buried in the sand, as it may harm turtle nests which may be entangled in the seaweed. If a group need to do a cleanup, what they can do is contact the NCC and let them know which beach they are looking at um, cleaning, and I'm sure the work will be given where they can just go ahead and do some cleaning, and the NCC will assist whatever way they can. Any of the beaches that they frequent or any beach near to their homes, they can come out and lend a hand in just cleaning. Um, I'm sure we have staff on, on sites who will be able to show them where they can put the stuff when they pull it up, where they can pull it for removal or just for breakdown. Many Barbadians have decided to lend a hand in what is being described as a national effort. Large groups have flocked to various events staged by the Coastal Zone Management Unit and the Department of Emergency Management. I think it's a national, it's a national effort. It should be everybody behind the, the camera to come out and really and truly come and clean up. Because um, er, everything in, 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 in life is visual now. And when we, when we come to the beach, we see, we, see the, um, the, we see the seaweed on the beach. And we don't see the white sands. We see the brown, dark seaweed. So it's best for us to just come out, everybody behind, like I said, behind the camera to come out and just pick up a rip, pick up a, a hole, pick, pick up a shovel to come out and clean up. As scientists continue to determine the cause of the excess sargassum seaweed that is affecting many of the Caribbean islands, Barbadians are encouraged to continue in their support of the cleanup efforts. But they should not be deterred from participating in one of the favorite recreational activities on the island, relaxing on our beautiful beaches.